Statistics and Excel, bell curve batting average comparison part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's six tabs currently down below. The two example tabs in essence answer keys the two practice tabs having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem the two blank tabs is where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing at this point in time quick recap of what we did last time we went online to find some resources for baseball statistics we downloaded them in a csv or comma delimited type of format and then we put them into our blank data so that we can sort the information populated in a table, filter it, pick up what we need, and then copy it over to our blank tab, looking at just basically the batting averages. We converted the batting averages to a decimal format so that we have whole numbers with them now. So now we have the 60 representing basically the 60% here for uh, 2000 or 1920 and 2022. So we have the two years so that we can compare the two. We did our standard data calculations, the mean standard deviation median mode for 1920 and 2022. Looking at the differences between the two, we noted that the mean is similar to the median and mode for both years, which would indicate that we could have a bell-shaped curve which might help us with our uh, comparisons. So now we are constructing our bell-shaped curve, starting with the 1920 data. We plotted from negative five, which is unusual. You might say, why would we have an X of negative five? The batting averages would need to be between one and 100, but four standard deviations goes down to negative five here. And so we wanna have all of the data that we could on the bell curve so we have a nice smooth bell curve and we can kind of double check that our data adds up to 100 as we did here when we did our norm.dist calculation this set of data basically adds up to 100 percent uh now and that is useful to be able to see that and in part it's doable because we converted the stats which were in percent or decimal format to you know whole numbers okay so now let's also do our z-score, which is a, a nice thing to be able to look at, especially when we're comparing two different years. Because when we're talking about people's batting averages, we, we might say, well, look, the things were a lot different in 1920 than 2022, but we can see where they were relative to the field at that point in time, relative to the mean, uh, and that's gonna give the z-score how far away from that middle point. So I can go to the home tab, font group let's make this black white let's center it and do the z score so the z score is going to be equal to brackets i'm going to take the x value which is a negative five in this case minus the mean the diff distance from the mean for 1920 data close up the brackets and divide that by the standard deviation so there we have it and enter now I want to copy that down, so I'm going to double click on it. Anything that's not in the current field I'm working in, 
then I want to make absolute. That's going to be these two in column J. So the J2, I'll put my cursor in there, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the J and the two, put my cursor on J3, F4 on the keyboard, or dollar sign before the J and the three, enter, back on it, double click in the fill handle to bring it on down. So there we have it. So if we're looking at a, a like a 32% a uh, batting average, then that's uh, 3.08 likelihood for that exact uh, area and it's 1.06 on the z-score or 1.06 away from the middle point the middle point being right here at around 24 to 25 that's where the z-score hits zero because of course that is the mean uh, for the 1920 data so then we can also take a look and and try to compare this to our actual data so what i'm going to do now is pick up our actual data to compare it to the actual data we could take these percentages and multiply them times the count over here let's calculate the count the count equals count and then i'll take my data for 1920 so it's just going to count all of the data and enter so there's uh, 629 count over here this is going to be equal to the count and we'll count this data and here we have 822 so I could multiply these percentages times the 629 and get whole and get numbers that we would think would basically represent if I had that sample using like the bell curve uh, data or I could try to convert my data into percentages so I can compare and that's probably the better way to go here so what I'm going to do is call this the frequency so this is going to be the frequency and I'm gonna say uh, let's make that home tab let's say actual actual data frequency and let's wrap the text home tab alignment wrap the text center it and make it black and white and so there we go that should work I'll, I'll check the spelling hopefully later and the frequency we're going to see how many times in this data set uh, do we get a count of x so uh, x being in this case above five and uh, less than or equal to four or for if i was talking down here which would be more common for batting average right it would be up to one uh, up to and including one uh, from zero, zero to one. That's what the frequency is going to give us. It's our buckets. So I'm going to say this equals the frequency, which is a spill array. The data set, I'm going to pick over the data, which is over here, and say, boom, there's our data, and then comma. And now we want the bins array, which is going to be this information. Control shift down and control backspace there we have it close, close up the table and enter and it spills it on down so there we have our accounts it's going a little far here so i'd like to remove that last one or actually it has a number in it so maybe i should make this go down one more go down to 55 just so we can include that last number and so okay so there we have it and then i'm going to total this and, and then sum it up over here. So if I sum this up, by the way, I should get alt equal, that should be 100 or one, home tab, no, numbers percentify. And this one over here, if I say alt equals, we're gonna get to the 629, which should be our count, right? There's the 629. That's a check or double check that we've kind of got all of our information. Now, instead of multiplying these percentages times 629 so I can compare to the frequency, I'm gonna take the percent, percent of total, the percent of the total, so that we can convert this into percentages, which I can compare to these numbers then on the actual data. So actual, let's say actual, actual percent of total, home tab, alignment, center, wrap it black white and then we'll put our cursor here this is going to be equal to this 
divided by, I'm gonna put my cursor in the data so I can say control shift down, taking me to the bottom, picking up the 629. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard to make it absolute. So there we have it. So we're gonna take each one of these divided by the total, enter, and let's make that into a percent. Home tab, number, percentify, add some decimals, putting our cursor on the fill handle, double clicking it, taking it on down. So now we've got our, our percentages comparisons. So this compared to this now, this compared to this, this is our bell curve. This is the actual percent of total data. Let's look at our differences then. We could say that, well, what's the difference between the actual and our percent data? Home tab, uh, no, font group, black, white, alignment, center, and let's say this is gonna be equal to the P of X minus the actual percent of total, making that a percent, home tab, number, percentify, adding some decimals, double clicking the fill handle to take it on down. So we can see the differences there. So it looks like it lines up pretty good, pretty good. Uh, now we could actually plot this information. We can plot these two basically on top of each other to see how closely they line up, the, the bell curve and the uh, actual percent of total. So we'll pick up control shift down and then shift up so I don't pick up the total, control backspace so I get back to the top and then insert charts. We're gonna put a bar graph and boom. So there's our actual data, it looks very bell-ish, bellish shaped. And let's say this is for uh, 1920 comparison. And then I'm gonna pick up the actual in data so let's put our cursor here. Let's go to the chart and let's add the data. I need to first pick up my proper X's. So these X's aren't right. I need to pick them up over here. So I'm gonna edit and then select this one and go into our X's like we do every time. Control shift down and shift back so I don't pick up the total. Enter, okay. So it looks like it's got the correct X's. So I'm gonna say, okay got the correct X's because we went to Texas and found all of my X's. That's a song. Sorry, that's a song. I got distracted. All of my X's are in Texas. Anyway, we're going to, I don't know why that song just, uh, would you, would you delete that? Stu, Phil, would you delete that? Because uh, that shouldn't be in there. Select, that's my editor. We're going to then go into here and, and we're going to say now, We'll then take this and say we want to select the data and we want to say that we have add. Let's add the next data set, which is going to be named the actual percent of total. And then we'll take our column over here and pick that one up and say percent, boom. Looks good. Okay. And okay. So now we've got the two on the same. So you can see that, that let's add a legend Let's add a legend. Oh, I thought it was gonna put a picture of me right in there, cause I'm a legend. I thought it was just gonna put my portrait on the side, whatever. Anyways, uh, you can see that the that the actual data is pretty close, you know, so, so you can see the, to, the, to the bell shaped curve, which means that the bell shaped curve should give us some predictive power over what we're doing here. So let's pull that on down now. We could, of course, make an area uh, type of graph as well. But let's. What I want to do now is do the same kind of thing for for uh, the next year. Let's put let's put something above this so that we can show that it's 1920 data. So I'm going to select all of this information, and right click and then insert, and uh, shift it down, shift it down. Okay, and then this is going to be 1920. And let's make that number format and let's just make it a general. And then I'm going to select that and I'm going to, I'm going to copy it across. I'm not going to, some people might merge. I don't like to merge. So I'd rather right click and then format the cells. So, and then go into the uh, alignment. And then I want it to be horizontal center across the selection. So that'll put it in the middle without combining. So they're still separate cells, but it's like in the middle. 
and then I can go into the home tab and let's make it a different color like a blue maybe let's make it blue and white so that's the 2020 stuff all right let's now do the stuff for uh for 2022 so i might be able to hide some data first let's make a skinny t it's like mr t got skinny because he stopped working out it's a skinny t and then we're gonna right click and then hide no one knows who mr t is anymore whatever everybody knows mr t man he's on the a team and so this one is blank because i hid the data all right let's do it again up top and then let's do this for 2022 so now we're on i'll put this up top 2022 formatting that home tab number let's make it general format i'll make this one green let's say so i'm going to hit the uh home font group let's make it dark green and then white okay so we have the same starting point we have x's we've got the p of x p of x and then we're gonna have let's select those two i should have kept it unhidden so i can black white i'm gonna make the x a little smaller we should probably center it alignment center and then I should probably just copy the X's from what we did before, but I'll recreate them. Well, actually, let's unhide and copy the exact same X's. So I'm going to I'm going to unhide, putting my cursor from L to U, Lou, and then right click and unhide. And let's just pick up the exact same X's to make sure that we have them lined up. This equals this five, putting my cursor on it, double clicking the fill handle. It won't let me do that. So I got to drag it down. For crying out loud, Phil, why is the handle not working? Why is Phil's handle not working? So I'm going to scroll up. We don't need the decimals. Decimals, would you number group kindly depart so that we can get down to business over here? Then I'm going to hide from M to S. So Miss is going to, we're going to hide Miss and then hide. She's distracting people, the Miss. Okay, so now we're going to say this is going to be equal to norm.dist. And so now we're going to pick up uh, the X, which is now 2022 data. So, so I'm sorry, it's going to be that X, the 5, comma, the mean is that 22.2 for the 2022 data. I want to F for it because I want to copy it down, dollar sign before the K and the 2, so that 22.2 don't move down comma standard d that's going to be the 6.12 f4 in other words make it absolute dollar sign before the k and the three comma cumulative no false or zero closing it up enter putting my cursor on it percentifying the cell home tab number group percentify so we can recognize and then we're going to put our cursor on the fill handle and double click it on down there we have it and now it, it adds up to 100% if I go to the total down here and we say alt equal one or 100 home tab number percentify decimalize and recognize. All right, so then we're gonna say uh, the Z, we can do our Z score, which is important for our comparison purposes. Home tab, uh, font group, black, white, let's center it let's make it a little smaller and the z is going to be equal to brackets the five minus the x minus the mean 22.2 in this case close the brackets dividing by the standard d standard deviation 6.14 there's our z i want to copy it down so anything that's outside of my data over here that's outside of the table i'm working in i need to make absolute that's anything in column k so that's going to be this K2, F4, dollar sign before the K and the 2, K3, F4, dollar sign before the K and the 3, enter, putting my cursor on the Z score, double clicking it down, and we can see that it gets to that zero point around 22 and 23 because that's the mean, and that makes sense. So we can compare the Zs for years 2022 and 1920. 
Now let's do the actual frequency. You're a frequency, frequency, I don't know, font group, black, white. Did you just call me a freak? I no, it's the freak, the frequency I said. I said frequency. We're gonna say this is gonna be the frequency, which is which is how many times it's gonna fall into the buckets. For example, this one being above zero up to and including one. So we'll do our frequency equals frequency tab data array is gonna be over here. Control shift down, control backspace to get back up, comma, and then the bins array, which are our X's, which all live in Texas. We try to stay out of Texas, therefore, I, because you, there's, that's where the X's are. And so it's not a pleasant place a lot of times. That's a song. Okay, get the song out of your head. No song references. No one even knows what you're talking about, man. No one even knows what you're talking about. Okay, sorry. Let, this con There's still two down here. So let's actually pull this down and bring this down to one more i'll pull these two down so that we get that last two in there and this should be 56 ah uh, and then there we have it so now i can total this up this is going to be uh, alt equals alt equals 822 so that 822 should tie out to that so that looks good that's our check number. Now, and now I, what I'd like to do, I could multiply all these numbers by the 822 so I can compare it to the frequency, but I'd rather make these into percentages. So now I'm gonna say this is going to be the actual, actual percent of total. And then we're gonna go home tab, font group, black, white, wrap it, uh, center it and then we'll say this is going to be equal to that zero divided by I'm going to go into my data so I can go control shift down just so I can find that bottom number f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the x and the uh, 65 so I can copy it down not having the total move down when I do so percentifying the cell before we copy it down home tab number group percentify to recognize add some decimals fill handle double click in it and fill fill does the calculations and there we have it so i can say alt equals that should be a hundred percent right there home tab number group percentify to recognize and so there we have now i can say the difference the difference between the actual data and the P of X data, home tab, font, black, white, center is equal to P of X stuff minus actual percent of total, percentify, home tab, number group, percentify, decimalize, double click and fill handle to bring it on down. There we have it. All right, so let's, let's put a, I have a 2000, I thought I put a 2000, oh, there it is. Let's center this 2022 thing now, selecting this whole bit up top, right clicking, uh, formatting the cells. And I will do this by going to the alignment group, horizontal center across selection and okay. You can't see it because it's in the middle now and it's white there. So home tab, font group, bucket drop down, make it green. And there we have it, and the hiccups. Okay, so that looks good. So, so now I could say uh, that, that we, we do a uh, P of X calculation. So I could say, well, let's look what the P of X looks like. Control shift down and shift up to not pick up the total. Control backspace to get back to the top. And then I'm gonna say insert charts. Let's put this in place with a bar chart boom and so there's our our uh, actual data this is for 2022 comparison let's say and then i'm going to put my actual data on top of it well first let's fix the x's the x's down here they need to be fixed something needs to be done about these x's 
We're going to go to the chart design. We're going to go to select and then edit this on the left and then add our X's. I'll be selecting my X's. Okay. I'll be so you don't just give me random X's. I'm the one that picks them. So there they are. And then we're going to say, okay. And then no, now let's put the actual data on top of it to compare it. So we're going to go to the chart design data select, and then we're going to add more data and I'm going to call it actual percent of total. And then we're going to say, boom, and let's pick up our actual data and okay. Okay. And so now you can see this one's a little bit kind of weirder because well, let's add the legend, hit the plus button. We're going to add a legend and it's going to show a picture of me. Oh man. I'm, I thought when you look it up in the dictionary legend, then I thought there's a picture of me when that, when you do that, but no, they put the legend here. So then now this one, you know, it's a little bit more wonky, but it still kind of conforms to, to so you think the bell curve would still give us some predictive power. So we're going to say, all right, let's put that down here in our collection of pictures. I'll put this over here. I have a lot of pictures on your phone of your family and stuff. No, they're of charts. They're, they're chart pictures. They're really important to me. I have to keep them safe over there. Okay, so now we're going to say that we want the difference. So we can call this, uh, let's put it up top, differences. Let's say, let's make that orange. Home tab, font group, drop down, making it, let's say, dark orange or something and white. And then let's put the differences for the X's and then the P of X's maybe and then we could say the differences between the actual uh, percent of total that we can do differences on selecting these items home tab font group making it black white centered wrapping it i need to unhide my 2000 uh, 1920 data, which is between L and T, putting my cursor on the drop down or on the column L to, to you, Lou. We're going to Lou and right click, skip to the Lou, my darling, and uh, we want to unhide. Where's your darling? She skipped off to the Lou. Skipping to the Lou, my darling. That's a song. Nobody knows what you're talking about. That song is ancient for crying out. No, what's the Lou? And okay, whatever. I'm skipping to the Lou, man. So let's just do this. Actually, let's just pull over the X's. So the X's are just going to be this. And then I'm going to copy it down. And we're going to copy it down to here. And then let's go to the home tab numbers and remove some of the decimals. Okay. We can make this a little bit smaller possibly. All right. And then the P of X is I'm going to say is equal to the difference between the 1920 P of X data. So this minus then this data. So we can say, boom, there's that and I can make it a percent possibly home tab number percentify adding some decimals double clicking to take it on down. So now we're looking at the difference between 1920 and uh, and uh, 2022. I could do that for let's do that. Let's insert a cell here. Right click insert for the Z's as well. So for the Z's. I could say this equals the uh, Z here minus the Z there. So, and then I don't want to make that a percent. Let's format this one, home tab, font group, format, paint it. And so there's our difference. And then I'll just double click to bring that on down. 
we can take the differences in the actual percent of the total. So this equals the actual data for 1920 minus 2022, boom, making that into a percent, home tab, number percent, adding some decimals, double clicking it on down. So there's some, uh, some comparison data. And then of course we could make some other graphs and try to graph these things on top of each other if we wanted to, such as the uh, 1920 P of X and the 2022, just to see them overlapping each other to see what that would look like. So let's take the P of X here. I'm gonna say control shift down and then uh, shift up and control backspace back to the top, insert charts and let's insert a bar chart. So now we have, now we have P of X uh, 2000 or 1920 verse P of X uh, 2022, something like that. And then I'll pull this on over here and let's also pull in the 2022. I need the X's, so I'm gonna pick up the X's too. So we're gonna say, don't pick up the X's. It's not a good idea. It's not a good, we have to, we have to do it. We're gonna go in here. We need our own X's. It's better than just having random X's be given. It's either we pick them up or we get random X's. Okay, so there we have it and then so now we're gonna select the data and go into uh, chart design, select the data, and I can put on top of it, I'm gonna add another data set and say, this is gonna be the second P of X, uh, or let's call it this one. Let's just name it P of X 2022. And then I'm gonna pick this data is going to be this range p of x 2022 boom and okay so now you can see the the two if we if we approximate a bell curve on the two you can see they're slightly you know this this they're slightly skewed the shape of the bell curve let's let's add a legend here legend uh, hold on. I thought I changed the name. This orange one. Oh, my data. So this one. Let's edit this. And this is 1920. So let's just call it 1920. Okay. So the legend. And then this one, let's call it edit. Let's make that one 2022 and okay. Okay, so now we can see that the shapes of these on top of each other and see that it's kind of skewed. And then uh, this one obviously more peaked in uh, 2022. And we can see the differences over here in our mean is 24 versus 22. So those middle points you would think would be 24 versus the 22. So we can see kind of the the relative data here now when we look at the z scores remember we're thinking about the z scores are relative to the middle point of of their of their distribution which we have these two different kind of bell curves based on the two different time frames so we have that and then we could do a comparison of uh like the percent of of the total versus the percent of the total uh, over here. But let's let's keep it at that for, for now. And, and just note then, when you do some of these comparisons, then sometimes the Z-score becomes relevant because when you're trying to compare one year versus another year, you might be saying, well, uh, you know, if I, if, I, if I looked at something uh, down here and we had, we had a player that had like a 30, a 30%, right, a batting average in 1920, and we looked at their Z-score, which is this column, and so it's at it's at uh, 0.79, up above that average point. 
And if I go over here, the 30%, if we look at uh, the Z-score is 1.27 above. And so if I just look at those two numbers, you can say, well, they're both at that 30, but, but if I compare it to what was happening relative, uh, this one over here in 2022 is a lot higher up you know, it's, a, it's further away from that middle point, the average of the times. So you would expect, you know, that would, that would be a differentiating factor possibly, even though you're looking at the same percentages. Remember that the general idea of the statistics oftentimes is that I can't look at just how many at-bats they have or how many times they got on base because they're going to have different at-bats. That's why we make the percent. So, so the percent already kind of evens things out a bit but it's still not going to be uh give us a we might want to have more questions about who's the better player and what time frame and whatnot and the argument of course is going to be yeah but and the things were a lot different in in 1920 than 2022 so let's see how well that percentage was compared to the the middle point the average the Z score, right? And that would be another another factor that you can kind of put into play. Let's go ahead and add some formatting here. So I'm going to select all of my data uh, here up top. I'm just going to make it blue, home tab, font group, bucket. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors. There it is, the blue. And I like to put some borders around it. If I may, I'm going to do that here too. You may, no one's gonna stop you. Home tab, font group, border blue. Border blue, or at least I don't think anyone's gonna stop you. I won't stop you. You can make it a different color if you want. I won't stop you from doing that either. It's a free, it's a free country, man. It's a free country. Well, at least it used to be. Border blue. I wouldn't be surprised if someone stopped you now. The King of England probably come in here and try to tell you what color you should make your chart home tap font group border blue and then, and then we'll say this one home tab font group border blue and then this one uno vase moss one more time control shift down home tab font group border blue I'll make my table however I want to make my table it has only two legs on it and falls over every time I put something on it. That's how I want it. That's how I made it. That's how it's going to be. Okay. That's how it's going to be. This is going to be center across. Let's make it home tab, font group, and orange. And let's pull our graphs over here so we have all our pictures so we can see them. We need to have our, it's not enough just to have your pictures, your special pictures. You have to have them ready so that people can look at them. You can show them off when at like parties and stuff. So then, so there they are. Let's go into the review and I'm not, oh, now it's gonna, I can't spell check it because it has all the names. Let's try to highlight all of this stuff and just spell check it over here. See if I misspelled. I fixing my spelling spell check frequency I knew it that wasn't actual okay we can make some skinnies let's these can be skinnier mr. T you're still not skinny enough I know you lost some weight but still all right that looks pretty good looks pretty good